Everyone's rationalising. Uh, Rupert Murdoch has said that he's going to split News Limited in two. Uh, on one side, it'll be all those that uh, knew about the uh, phone hacking scandal, and on the other side, him. <laughs> it's an Olympic year too, gang. I'll be excited about that, yes? Big news from Athens. Uh, the Olympic Village is now ready. <laughs> And one of my greatest friends in rugby gave me this cauliflower ear. And he was an all black. And he was coming over here and he said, we're getting too friendly. He said, it's not in the next test. So, okay. First scrum goes down, it was in Brisbane. I fell whack on the side of my ear. I went bang and I split his eye and we both laughed. <laughs> As we sit here today at this gala event, I want to tell you the good news. We are winning the battle against breast cancer. Although we all too often hear sad stories of cancer in young women and tragic deaths, in fact, in the past 20 years, deaths from breast cancer have declined by around a quarter. At the age of 44, I had my first mastectomy, and I can tell you that's a long time ago now. And seven years later, I had the second. And fortunately, I'm still here to tell the story and help to raise money. <laughs> I think when I got breast cancer, I was lucky it was a very good diagnosis. I was also lucky I had fabulous support from friends, from my husband, from my kids. And I was also lucky that my kids were actually teenagers and not babies as um, you'll soon hear. So yes, as you just heard, I was diagnosed um, with a really aggressive form of breast cancer the day before I gave birth um, to my first child. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, God. Oh, okay, oh, I'm gonna pull it together. In my scenario, uh, the way I found out was I had popped in to see my obstetrician. Everything was perfect, it was on track. And I was literally one foot out the door as I was leaving and then I remembered, I was like, oh yeah, by the way, I've got this, what I assumed was a blocked milk duct in my breast. And I mentioned it to him in passing, like, hey, whatever. And um, he booked me into an ultrasound and I didn't think anything of it. And I did an ultrasound, a second ultrasound, a mammogram, a biopsy, another biopsy, a third biopsy. And by this stage it was about three o'clock. So I figured something was wrong because I'd been there so long. That was the last time my life was normal. That they then said, you've got stage three breast cancer. Um, you've got to deliver your baby tomorrow morning because you need to be in chemo. Oh, I'm so sorry. Before the week's over. The tumour was, it was so big and so aggressive that I guess they feared for the worst. It's, um, it's quite hard to describe that moment. It's the only thing I can really liken it to is just like a head-on collision with a semi-trailer. It's the world stops. All you hear is you're going to die. By donating, you're single-handedly helping the doctors and the scientists continue their efforts. You're helping the nurses support and hold the hands of those whose lives have been turned upside down. You're helping to educate patients who've been thrown into a new world where everything is so frightening, where they're unsure of the next steps and whether they'll even live to see Christmas. You're helping to come up with a better chemo, a cure hopefully. You're helping to save lives, including mine, and for that I thank you. On behalf of anyone who's ever suffered at the hands of this terrible disease, thank you. Thank you very much, Sally. You are brave and you are very erudite and uh, you are very beautiful. We, uh, we are privileged to have heard your story today of your pain and your joy and uh, you've really graced us with your presence here today. Give you another round of applause, please, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Lovely human interest story involving my accountant. Let's call him Tommy. Tommy invited me around his house the other day and he was stewing having major problems with the wife. I'm writing a letter, leave it on the kitchen table and then I'm out, not coming back. So he did. Tommy, my accountant. 
He goes off. Wife comes back, letter on the table. It says, Dear wife, I'm 54 years of age. By the time you receive this letter, I will be at the Holiday Inn in Suva with my beautiful and sexy 18-year-old secretary. Now, when he arrived at the Holiday Inn in Suva, there was a fax there waiting for him, and it was from his wife. And this fax read, Dear husband, I too am 54 years of age. By the time you receive this fax, I'll be at the Hilton Hotel, good hotel, in Auckland with my 18-year-old toy boy. You, being an accountant, will therefore understand that 18 goes into 54 many more times than 54 goes into 18. <laughs> now, ladies, have I got you back? Have I got you back? Have I got the ladies back? There are a few worried frowns out there about the ex all black coming over the ditch, eh? The $55,000 Audi A3. How would you be? Ladies and gentlemen, Jamie, reach into that uh, receptacle and draw one out for us, buddy. Don't tell me what it is. Just bring it over here. Oh, my God. So, standing up should be people holding a ticket between 300 and 310. If you're holding 310, you're out. If you're holding 309, you're out. If you're holding 308, you're out. If you're holding 301, you're out. If you're holding 302, you've won a new Audi A3. <laughs> Folks, have a great afternoon. You've done a terrific job. You've raised a lot of money. Hope you've had some fun. We'll see you at the Sydney Breast Cancer Long Lunch 2013, I hope. I'm Vince. See you later. Have a great afternoon. Go the Reds. Beep, 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 yeah.